Howdy, welcome to the video. This uh, animation that's running right here is very similar to one that I put up on some of the Facebook's groups got some positive response and some people were curious to know how I did it, how I did the animation, and how I did the, the shader. If you're interested in the shader and you already know how to do that kind of animation, I'm going to put in the description a timestamp so you can just click right to that part. Throw a modifier on this here thing, subdivision surface, and I'll turn it up a bit. Frame. Okay, leave it on wireframe for now and turn off optimal display so we can see what's going on. Okay, now I've got that. Now what I want to do is deform it. So what I put in is a um, oh, displace modifier. And I'm going to make it to clouds. And I'm going to make it 1.25. You can obviously slide this around and make it any size you like. But this is the one I tend to like. And I think I used a depth of 1. So we do 1 and we change this to hard. And that is the shape. So if we look at it this way, it looks like this. And I obviously shade smooth and there it is. That's the shape. To animate the shape, come back here. I'm going to add in an empty. Then I'm going to go into that modifier, displace, and change it from local to object. The object is the empty. I could just pick it off the list. Now, if that empty moves, watch the shape. If the empty moves, the shape moves. And that's it. That's that's all there is. So the way I animate it in a loop is by throwing in a curve. And, oh, by the way, <coughs> screencast does not work on here, or I would be using it. If you don't know how to do what I'm doing, just ask. I'm using a lot of hotkeys, and I'm not bothering to mention them. Um, the empty... Then go to this tab here, which is Object Constraint Properties, and add Follow Path. And then from this menu, choose the circle. You can see the thing jumps to the circle right away. And if I hit Animate Path, see, I hit Animate Path, and that makes it run around the path. That's what it does. Now there's a problem. See that jump? It doesn't matter if you saw it or not. If you want to make a looping animation, which is what I did, you have to go into the curve menu, which is here. And down here under path animation, open that up, it says frames is 100. So it's going around once in 100 frames, but my animation is 250 frames long. So I want them to, I want to match them up. So I put 250 in there doesn't matter what number is in which place as long as they both match. That's it. That's the animation. Okay. And obviously, if you look close, let me pause it. You see these little distortions and little stuff? That's because I only have five as the, as the what do you call it? Now I'm going to look through the camera. G, middle mouse. Push it in a little bit closer. There we go. That's uh, great. Now let's get to the shader, which is the part some of you are waiting for. Um, the shader consisted of an outline, and then I filled in the, the middle to look like cell animation. So let's begin by putting in a background. That's going to be a plane, R twice, let me do this, R once, let me do this, scale X twice, I can do this, and then just scale it up real big. And from here, move it back so it's not cutting through that thing. Then through from the camera, that completely fills the screen. I'm going to go to the plane, 
material for the plane, new, change that to emission, and just let it be white. Now that's white, and yet this looks gray, what's going on? That is in the EV settings. Go down to film, and no, not film, go down to uh, color management, you'll see why I said it, and filmic, change that to standard. And now in Eevee, it'll be white. Yeah, it was also gray because I didn't have it set to Eevee, but let me show you. If I change that back to Filmic, see? It gets gray. So, standard. Okay, now we've got a white background, and we have this thing. We want this thing to also be white. I'm going to change this to an emission shader. Bam. Now we've got a white thing against a white background not too visible let's for the sake of uh this video just make that a, a lime green like i had at the beginning well actually the one i had on facebook was blue let's make it blue i think yeah that'll work okay now we have that going now we want to get the outlines now this is how we get the outlines i'm going to stop this and now I have to explain things, which I don't like doing. But this is a new thing. What I'm going to do is use a uh, solidify modifier to make the outline. You go, what? Watch. Okay, now as you can see, let me futz with this. See? The solidify a solidify modifier makes a, a space between the original geometry and a, a layer of geometry that it creates by offsetting from a certain distance from the geometry. It can offset to the inside, as I just did, or it can offset to the outside, as I just did. Now, coming back over here I'm going to set this up and then I'll explain it going into the material offset I set that to 1 and come back here so I can see this thing under normals I'm flipping them and now let's get back to this object I'm on the object just add a new material and the new material is going to be an emissive. Black. Now the whole thing's black. Now here's where the trick comes in. I'm going to go to material. I guess it doesn't matter which one I'm doing it on. Settings. Back face culling. You go, what? <laughs> <laughs> there it is that's it um, the way it works is a little hard to explain but basically back face culling does not take away the vertices I mean the faces that are in the back it takes away the faces that the normals are facing away from you okay so by flipping the normals, the whole front of, of the black part, all those normals are facing inward. So it takes those away. So you see the ones in the back that are facing toward me. And inside that, you see the original shape because the ones in the front are facing away from you. I mean, are the ones in the... Yeah, the ones in the front are facing toward you. So it leaves those there. End result is you get what looks like an outline. When in fact, it's just the inside of a shell made of uh, made from the solidify modifier. Now let's do the other little cell thing. I'm going to do that with a by playing with the shader editor. Okay, there is. The shader, there it is, the shader that we're using on this material 
is is this no that's not it I must click the background showing me the wrong one there we go okay we got this blue thing so let's change that to white and this way by the way it just looks like a a nice line drawing and by the way the reason it looks all fuzzy like that there's two things I can do one is turn off viewport denoising because that messes it up so that looks better that way plus when it renders it smooths it out a little bit more also I can increase the uh, subdivisions on the subdiv modifier to smooth that out more but here's the point I'm getting to diffuse shader and if I stick that in here now it's a diffuse shader without lines but what we want is that tune shader thing what I want to do is add a converter a uh, color ramp the problem is so then I can do this I can like turn it on constant and then slide this around and I have two colors which is exactly what I want the problem is if I try to connect this into that you get this red line and it doesn't work and it doesn't work because the output of a shader is not the kind of input that a color ramp takes so we have to convert that fortunately there's a thing in here called shader to RGB that converts it now notice all the lines are white and everything's real happy now if I stick this in here and put that back in there we have what well, doesn't look it but we have um, there that which is cool if that's the look you're going for now what I want to do is set this at 0 0.5 this is the way to adjust it for maximum whatchamacallit and then I want to move the light so the way I'm going to do this is first pull out and look at what see where the light is oh and this is also set on the wrong thing anyway I gotta fix that first let me put the light about where I think it ought to be just visually and then I can adjust the light forward and backward and up and down and such by doing this and I'm adjusting the light position to get it where I want it that's good now the only other thing I have to do is um, make this have the colors I want and the easiest way to do that to get nice colors that complement each other is get rid of one of these doesn't matter which set this one to the color I want which is yeah, kind of like that then I'm going to add in make sure that's not at 5 put in another one which comes in at 0.5 that means this one is the one I'm going to change which is going to lower the saturation and drop the brightness thus and there it is that thing at the beginning just real briefly uh, that was done with a mirror modifier there's nothing magic there you just select the thing and uh, throw in a mirror modifier and then it looks like that uh, there is one thing I did though let me take a look at it X yeah bisect and the reason it looks so lumpy is because of what I said before find my displace 
change that to zero. There you go. And then if I want it to be super, super smooth, I just uh, knock these down because I don't want to blow it out when I add one, which I'm going to do. Duplicate. And now they multiply together. So I want this one to be three. This one to be three. Does that mean there's six or there are nine? The answer is that's a good question. And there it is. Very smooth looking. So I'm just going to let this run through a few, a few frames. Yeah. So that's it. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I'm going to be doing another video where I show a lot more stuff, a lot more ways of, of playing with the shader, because the shader is the important part, not the, not the animation. So if you like this, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Uh, specifically, look for Blender Dharma. That's my new channel. And uh, all the stuff is going to be going on Blender Dharma from now on and not any of the other channels. So if you're watching this on one of the other channels, go to Blender Dharma, D-H-A-R-M-A, and uh, subscribe on there, because in a little while, the other channels are going to go away. They're just going to disappear. Uh, they'll be there for a while, but not, not forever. Oh, the blend file that I made while you were watching just now I'll have with the video on Blender Dharma or on the blog if you go there well actually it'll be on the blog there'll be a link below this to the post on the blog where this video will be and uh, in that same post you'll be able to to download the blend file okay that's it for today uh, don't uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't done that already uh, make sure you go to Blender Dharma, the blog, and the YouTube channel, and like it there, because if you're seeing this on any other channel, those are going to go away, and it's only going to be Blender Dharma in a little while. Other than that, hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next one.